In today's world, thinking about a camera that can shoot around 12K resolution is finally possible in a realistic sense. But back in 2008, Red Digital Cinema claimed to be working on something far greater than even 12K resolution, with a massive 28K resolution sensor that was two times the resolution of an IMAX camera. But since that explosive announcement, there's barely been a word spoken about the 28K Epic 617 Mysterium Monstro sensor. So where is this sensor? And is it being developed behind the scenes? Or has it just become another one of Red's discarded products? Find out on today's Abandoned Camera Series. There's a lot of mystery surrounding this 28K sensor from RED. In fact, with so little information or news in recent history about this sensor, we have to dig into the early history of RED to understand what may have happened to this announced sensor. RED Digital Cinema was founded by Jim Jannard in 2005, who was the founder of Oakley and had recently sold off all of his shares in the Oakley company. Jim Jannard described himself as a camera fanatic, but from what he said in his interview, he had no clue what he was doing. So this and it's true. We have no idea whatsoever what we were, what we are doing now. No idea. We're making it up as we go. It was the same way with the Red One. We had no idea how to build a camera. I made a decision and then we figured it out. With this admission, it's quite curious how they were able to seemingly blow up the entire camera industry a year and a half later with the groundbreaking Red One camera. This camera was instrumental in forcing Airy, Panavision, Sony, and others to finally work on developing their own digital sensors for film, resulting in cameras like the Airy Alexa. There is a lot in the early history of Red digital cinema that doesn't quite make a lot of sense, but we will focus on one aspect of their early design and development that's the groundbreaking Mysterium sensor. What's in here is a little bit of secret sauce. We're on our pathway to our Super 35 millimeter 4K sensor. This is the first test shoot of many. Jim Jannard was adamant when starting Red that he wanted a camera capable of capturing 4K images as he wanted something as close to film quality as possible. And that 1080p or 2K footage was not respectful to film, which considering Airy just recently got into the full 4K resolution game themselves, we'd say this statement is a questionable at best, especially coming from someone who said, We had no idea how to build a camera. So at the time, there were very few companies really at the bleeding edge edge of sensor technology, and Jim Jannard and his team were desperately searching for a solution for their 4K sensor needs. The team began engaging in undisclosed research on how to make that dream feasible. And at the 2006 NAB show, Jannard announced that they would begin taking pre-orders for the first camera they called the Red One. My name's Ted. My title is Leader of the Rebellion for a company called Red Digital Cinema. That's actually my real title. That's not just for my business cards. We're building a cinematography tool, a high-end cinematography tool that, that distills down really nicely into the broadcast world, into even people that want to shoot corporate work and, and you name it. I mean, we're building a tool that is affordable for something that's really next generation. This is a 4K digital cinema camera with a list price of $17,500. In what seemed like some kind of miracle, somehow Jannard and Red had figured out how to make a sensor capable of achieving 4K at cinema level quality. But where did the sensor tech come from? Certainly not from a company that had barely been around for two years by the time they shipped the Red One with groundbreaking sensor technology, right? Well, according to them, they built the sensor. And we built our own sensor with our own sensor team, with our own sensor knowledge. And Everything you see in this booth, including what's in that 4K theater, was done in the last 15 months. And that's remarkable. From building our own sensors, creating all the camera electronics, getting everything working. These are working models that you see on the show floor right now. And this was the line they gave their customers until others like Dr. Fossum, the inventor of the CMOS sensor, questioned this saying in 2012 that he had never heard of an image sensor designer who worked for RED. Recently in a deposition and other research into the Mysterium sensor, Jim Jannard <laughs> said this. We weren't a sensor company. We wanted to build cameras. One of the components of a camera is a sensor. So we hunted down the one sensor company that was capable of producing the sensor we wanted, and we contracted them to do that. 
Turns out their sensor actually had been acquired for use, likely belonging to a company named Forza, and that Red had acquired it and not built it themselves as they had claimed. Not being straight with its consumer base is something that Red has a bit of a history of doing. And while, as a private company, they don't have to legally disclose anything, selling magic in a box and not being transparent about what it actually is, is going to eventually backfire on you a bit. This makes Red's decision to claim it made the sensor themselves confusing, as it wouldn't really have made a difference in either way at least in my opinion. They didn't even have to mention who they partnered with to make it. A little transparency probably would have helped them out here. But what does this have to do with the announced 28K sensor in 2008? Well, it's an updated Mysterium sensor. Hello, I'm Ted Chilowitz, Ted from RED, most people call me. I work for RED Digital Cinema. We make a 4K digital cinema motion picture camera. We are working on a next generation uh, set of cameras called Scarlet and Epic that will push the envelope much further in terms of resolution and next generation technology. This camera is 4K, which is about five times the resolution of 1080p. And our next generation cameras, we are going to 5K, 6K, 9K, and even 28K cameras. So we're quite excited about that. Red's plan here didn't just include the 28K sensor, but a whole host of other sized Mysterium sensors that would allow you to mix and match based on what you needed. Red called the concept DSMC, or Digital Stills and Motion Capture. The first camera release for the system was the Epic X, a professional digital stills and motion capture camera with interchangeable lens mounts. After this, a new camera line called Scarlet was introduced that provided lower end specifications at a more affordable price. Initially equipped with a 5K imaging sensor, upgrades were later offered to a 6K sensor with a higher dynamic range called the Red Dragon. The goals it seen behind the astronomical resolutions was to achieve an image that could get the same quality as a film camera, even an IMAX camera. Red's chief marketer, Ted Shilowitz, said at NAB in 2012 that Red also has 8K and 28K devices in development, the latter a super large format. There are no limits to what we can do, said Shilowitz. I'm often asked why we need to go to 4K, 8K, or beyond, but that is not the right question. The question is, what am I going to do with a device that can shoot at a higher resolution than I have ever seen before? The industry is coming around to what we have known for six years, namely that you can't do much with 1080p. You shoot it and you live with it. You can't do anything more with it. We are at the point where all other camera companies are thinking like Red. They are now where we were four years ago. The full upgrades, though, in the planned sensor tree were never fully updated, with even the 645 Mysterium Monstro never happening. This 2012 statement at NEB was the last update I could find online from Red about the 28K Epic 617 Mysterium Monstro. And the last article even mentioning this was in 2017 from No Film School's Charles Hain, who speculated that it could still be in development, maybe even still nine years away from happening. So, what happened here? We can only speculate as to why the sensor concept has seemingly been abandoned, and while there's no concrete proof to our theories here, we can make some logical guesses. The first logical guess we could come to is that it wasn't close to being technologically feasible and was a marketing ploy. Even though Red pushed this sensor out with the idea of it being right around the corner, they did give themselves some leeway at the bottom of the sensor roadmap, which states, specifications and delivery dates are subject to drastic changes. Count on it and you won't be disappointed. Drastic changes Changes to delivery dates are right since it's been nearly 15 years since it was announced. But you could say Red already knew this was not even close to being technologically feasible yet. And sure, they said that they were developing it behind the scenes, but that's a very vague statement. This really fits into Red's culture as a company early on and matches well with their founder, Janard's time at Oakley. Red liked to be mysterious in their marketing, creating buzz around everything they were doing. Jim Gennard is the other half of uh, the, uh, that's the hit squad, and uh, his title is Madman. Case in point, when Red was working on their failed smartphones, the hydrogen one, they hyped it up so much with Janner telling people it was the most important thing he's ever worked on in his life. In the end, the phone was a total failure because it just replicated something that had already been done before. Teasing their Android smartphone with vague and enticing details, stating that the phone shattered the mold of conventional thinking and would feature nanotechnology. I love marketing buzzwords. Now, I'm not saying companies shouldn't hype their products up to their customers. That's just a good business marketing practice. The problem is when you start to hype things up that you'll never be able to deliver on or even close to delivering on too often. We could go on and on about all the different products they've hyped up that aren't anything special, but 
you know, we'll save that for another time. All this just to say it's not a far leap logically to think that their 28k Mysterium sensor was simply a marketing ploy to whip up media frenzy and get people excited to buy a new camera and buy into a new system because of the promise of what was to come. I mean, just look at the renderings Red made of it. It looks absolutely insane and it's mind bending to even think of 28k resolution even today. It's a great talking point for the press and it's a great way to spread word of mouth on a product. So I could really just see this being a marketing ploy by Red and that the 28k sensor is honestly just a fantasy and was never real in the first place. The second logical conclusion we could come to is that sensor technology changed. Around 2012, Jim Jannard announced their one sensor to rule them all, the Dragon sensor. As this is around the same time that we last heard from Red about the 617 28k Mysterium sensor, it logically would make sense that with what they could achieve with the new sensor technology, the, that 28k resolution kind of became an obsolete idea. Also, at this point, they had a lot more time behind the scenes in development than they did early on, and it kind of learned a few more things about what actually was needed for better picture quality, more so than just resolution. You don't have to look any farther than Aerie to see that resolution only plays a part in the making of a cinematic image. There are a lot of other technical components to a sensor and camera that can help make picture quality more like film despite Jannard's claim that 1080p and 2k were disrespectful to film. So this also feels logical as they developed as a company, they kind of just realized along the way they didn't need 28k resolution to achieve the picture quality they sought after. At the end of the day, whether this 28k sensor was real or just a marketing ploy, it's something that Red completely abandoned at this point with no real reference or update given on it in the last 10 years. With sensor technology advancing to places we never thought possible 10 years ago, it's more than likely we will never see this sensor come to fruition from RED. Interestingly enough, around the same time that the rumors and talk of the 28K sensor started to die down, another new camera company took to the stage at NAB in 2014 with a camera that would be the foundation for a line of cameras that would lead to 12K resolution. So be sure to check out that video and let us know what you think happened to the RED 28K sensor below.